So I'm going to talk about kind of the first three all together. This tray is made of hemostats um, and kind of different things that we're gonna pick things up with, okay? So it's easier if we kind of go and I give you kind of a broad review of sort of what some of these things are. So all hemostats, okay? Hemostats are used to stop the flow of blood, okay? So they're meant to clamp off a vessel. So we have the straight hemostat, curved hemostat. Hemostats kind of look like scissors, but they don't have a cutting edge, okay? And they lock into place. Okay, so the idea is that if something, if there's a vessel that's bleeding, you clamp it off with a hemostat. There's lots of different uses for hemostat, but in surgery, that's its primary use is supposed to be there to control the stop of bleeding. So we have the straight, it's straight, okay? We have a curved, it's curved. So that's gonna be your difference between your straight and your curved. This will be operator preference, okay? Straight and curved. The curved hemostat is sometimes known as a snap. Okay, I'm gonna pass them around in a second. So the one that we skipped over is the needle holder. So if you look, this is the needle holder. This is your straight hemostat. Kinda look exactly alike, right? So you're gonna wanna make these notes. The difference is, first of all, the, the function of a needle holder is to hold a needle while suturing tissue, okay? so. Its function is different, and I'll show you why in a second. So this is the needle holder. So three different things that you can write that are gonna help you to differentiate. One, a lot of times it can have a gold handle. In this case it doesn't, but a lot of times it will be seen as having a gold handle. Two, it has a notch in the beak, which I'll come around and I'll show you. That notch is specifically there to hold the needle, okay? Suture needles are not like the anesthetic needles. Suture needles are kind of almost like this C shape because it needs to kind of go in and be able to come out, right? So it's almost this C shape. So it will be held in this needle holder. So that's obviously one of the big differences is it will have this notching, which I'll show you. The other one that's almost quicker to look at if if you had a hard time finding that, is your straight hemostat has a long beak. So therefore, your needle holder has a short one. So just holding these two up, now you can really see that that's a big difference, right? So this beak is really big. That's your straight hemostat. Your needle holder has a short beak, okay? So when you're just looking at your trees, if it was in just a whole mess of stuff, to differentiate the needle holder, it's going to have that notch and it's going to have a short beak. So, see that notch? And it's, it's a shorter beak. It's truly just like a hole in it. Okay. So, what, what looked like two exactly the same thing, and then it's be a short as opposed to the long. So, see the hole? right down at the bottom there, so that's your notch. And then you can see that the beak is much smaller than the needle holder. Mm -hmm. right, so see that notch right there, the circle? Mm -hmm. Tissue four set, kind of look like a um, tweezer. Tweezer, thank you. Where it looks just like a tweezer. They're also known as pickups. Okay, so sometimes they're known as pickup. Tissue four sets. This is going to hold tissue during the surgical procedure. So if tissue needs to, so um, in this case, the clinician would be working, and if there was something they wanted to pull away. They might hold the tissue 
four set and then use some other instrument. It's gonna give them a little bit more vision or it's gonna keep it out of the way so it's something, if, in case they were afraid it would be damaged, okay? So tissue forceps, pickups. Hold tissue during the surgical procedure. Kinda looks like tweezers. You can write that in your note if you'd like. Then we have the tissue retractor. So this is meant to delicately retract soft tissue without causing trauma. So in the event that we've kind of, there's some kind of a flap there and we don't want there to be any trauma, this is just gonna kind of hold it back, okay? There, in this case, this one does have three kind of like prongs, but it's still actually not enough that it's gonna like cut right through it. It's just gonna kind of hold it back. It's gonna give it a little something to hold back. It's like a back sculpture. Okay. I don't know why it's in So it would just be meant to kind of hold the tissue back without causing any kind of an issue, okay? Tissue retractor. There's a ton of different versions of all of these instruments. So when you look even through your flip guide, you'll see that there's lots of different versions, but these are the ones that we'll, we'll be working with. All right, so that is trays one, one through one, three, okay? So all of the things that we just reviewed will fall under the pass off for tray one, okay? Yes. What was the difference between the tissue retractor and uh, elevators? So elevators are meant to break a seal. So they're not trying to be delicate. They're actually going in and removing that bond between the tooth and the tissue. So the elevator is actually going in and moving everything. Oh, that's Which we're gonna get to elevators. Oh, you mean the periosteal elevator? Yeah, so the periosteal elevator, that is meant to go and break bonds between the tooth and the tissue. That is truly just meant to hold something just to retract it out of the way. So that's meant to not cause any kind of change or damage. So it's meant to cause no trauma. The periosteal elevators, are their job is to traumatize. 